welcome to the Green Biz Studio. I'm Grant Harrison, Vice President for Sustainable Finance and ESG at Green Biz Group. And I'm pleased to be joined here today by John Moon, SVP, Sustainability and Philanthropy Leader at Wells Fargo. John, it's great to have you with us in the studio. It's great to be here with you, Grant. So why don't we start by having you uh, just tell us what is the Greenhouse Gas Reduction Fund? Sure. Um, the Greenhouse Gas Reduction Fund is a provision within the Inflation Reduction Act that provides $27 billion in direct funding for clean energy projects. And it should be noted that the IRA, uh, most of the incentives are actually tax credits. In this case, it's direct funding. Uh, the winners were recently announced by EPA back in late April and May, and $20 billion will flow through CDFIs, Community Development Financial Institutions, and Green Banks, with the goal to leverage private capital, particularly from banks. Um, notably, the, um, the requirements are to provide capital into low-income and disadvantaged communities, and hopefully that funding becomes available early summer of this year. And, and what are the requirements for uh, low-income and disadvantaged communities, and what will it take to support uh, the opportunities in these communities? Sure. The awards are broken out into three areas. So you have $14 billion, which is the National Clean Investments Fund, uh, or also known as NCIF, where 40% go into low-income and disadvantaged communities. Uh, three winners have been announced there. The Clean Communities Investment Accelerator um, uh, awarded five winners, and that's $6 billion that go uh, into equity-type grants into community lenders and green banks. And then finally, uh, Solar for All is $7 billion to governmental entities, tribes, nonprofits to support solar deployment with 100% of the projects going into low-income areas, and there are 60 uh, winners announced for that program. I think there are two um, key uh, issues with regard to uh, getting funding into low-income communities. The first is around capacity. Uh, in order to support uh, clean energy projects, uh, especially in the low-income and disadvantaged communities, there has to be a great deal of um, capacity building for especially resource-constrained nonprofits to develop projects, to develop um, heating and water systems, to develop the engineering so that they can um, uh, figure out how to install these projects uh, into affordable housing uh, uh, assets, for example. Uh, another key uh, challenge is simply affordability. Um, you know, it's an equally important dimension is the ability to pay for these new systems, but also to pay for it so that you can maintain affordability. So going back to the affordable housing example, um, we need to install solar, uh, you need to install these new heat systems, but also do it so that the overall energy and utility costs are maintained or lowered, because if they are above the way they currently spend, um, it just becomes economically infeasible for uh, many of these uh, cash-constrained nonprofits. Great. So, so you mentioned a few of the um, institutions that are responsible for deploying this uh, capital from the Greenhouse Gas Reduction Fund. What, what role does a bank uh, like Wells Fargo play in uh, deploying these funds? Sure. Um, so the requirements within the Greenhouse Gas Reduction Fund require private capital leverage, and there are different uh, leverage requirements depending on the program. So the, the National Community Investment Accelerator, um, or sorry, the National Community Investment Fund uh, requires a 7x leverage. That means for every dollar that's deployed uh, by a Greenhouse Gas Reduction Fund winner, $7 need to be raised in private capital. On the CCIA side, the leverage requirement is 3x. So in other words, $1 uh, from CCIA money, $3 uh, of bank capital or other private capital will, will need to be raised. And of course, the, the broader purpose of doing this is so that we can ultimately get more projects, uh, more dollars into projects by creating financial incentives for private capital that can uh, result in things such as a lower blended interest rate, which ultimately helps the affordability of these uh, projects. And so banks will be co-lending uh, their capital alongside these projects with the GGRF winners. Okay, great. So we've heard the, uh, the nonprofit coalitions, the role for banks. What about other uh, corporations? What role do they play in uh, deploying these funds and supporting local project development? Yeah, I'll, I'll go back to the issue of ensuring funding for uh, 
low-income communities. So as mentioned, uh, low-income communities and a lot of the community-based organizations are resource constrained. And so given the greater interest by corporations to support climate-related activities, particularly activities in low-income and disadvantaged communities, uh, any kind of corporate philanthropy to support the development of projects would be a huge need. Uh, it goes back to the issue of affordability. The more um, additional funding we can get into projects, the more economically feasible, and hopefully, the lower we can make uh, the the pro or the, the more or we can make these projects economically feasible. Um, there are also other related needs like workforce needs. Uh, we need the workforce to install these projects. There's uh, questions around the current stock of uh, uh, people who can do the installations for solar or the heat pumps. And so there are a lot of different uh, workforce development programs, both um, at the state level and at the local level that can train existing workers or train new workers uh, to grow the field so that we have more installers. Uh, and of course, um, if we can do more of the workforce development focused on low income populations or or, or populations that are hard to employ, um, there's a, a, an additional benefit there. Uh, so with the growing interest by corporates in the climate and ESG space, um, I think there's a, a, a tremendous opportunity for corporates to step in in a very meaningful way. Well, John, this is a really uh, exciting opportunity, a really important development. Uh, and we appreciate you coming to the GreenBiz studio to make us all smarter on deploying greenhouse gas reduction funds. Thanks for having me. You've just heard from John Moon, SVP, Sustainability Philanthropy Leader at Wells Fargo.